Welcome to Coffin Bay, situated a pleasant 50 kilometre drive northwest of Port Lincoln. Let me just say Port Lincoln, a magnificent part of the world here in South Australia. Now this part of the world was actually discovered by Matthew Flinders in 17 something and it was named after Sir Isaac Coffin. You know why? Because basically he paid the bills to get Matthew Flinders out here. I'm heading out with Why Not Charters to the magnificent Flinders and Pearson Islands. They may soon be closed to become marine parks and I just had to get out there and see these fish rich waters for possibly the last time. When David Clayfield made the call and said, Paul, you gotta come? Of course I said, why not? Lines in, mate, we're here. Thanks, Skip. There is no better noise on the sea when a thousand horsepower of diesel goes and you know you're at the fishing destination. Now, beautiful day, blue water, lots of big fish, and today I'm joined by David Campsell, boatsales.com.au, Rick Symes, Angle Australia. And I've got to ask, are the people in the office still friendly with you, David? You said, look, got to do the right thing, go with iFish for a week fishing trip? Look, they, don't, they have a bit of a complaint, but I don't mind. I work long and hard, and I just cannot wait to get right in the water and start catching some big fish. We do the hard yards. Now, Rick, Engel, it's all about fridges and freezers and stuff. And what about your crew? What do they say? Well, we got mentioned in the sales conference uh, last week, and yeah, the boys couldn't believe that I got the invite from you, and I said I'd be the man to fish it for Angle with the iFish. Now, you look a bit tired, mate. Have you been sleeping? Got the phone call from you two weeks ago. I think last night was the first night's sleep I've had in two weeks. I haven't either, because I'm not sure how these boys are going to go. <laughs> oh, it's a bit of weight there, not a great deal. And what, oh, how pretty is this thing? And on a jig, this 160 gram jig, and I've basically just been bouncing over the bottom. Look at the colours on that fish. It's a horseshoe leather jacket. And if you have a look there, you can actually see the horseshoe on the side. Look at the colours in the tail. Absolutely beautiful. And in South Australia, they actually eat the eye fillet of a leather jacket. Yeah, I'm serious. Just like an eye fillet of a cow, they reckon these things have beautiful eye fillets. And they say it is one of the best eating fish in the sea. I didn't know that till last night when I tried some at the pub. But it was pretty good too. On our way to our anchorage at Pearson Island, 80 case. But of course, every time you see a lump on the sounder, you've got to stop, try, catch a fish, and see how we go. Hey, mate. David. Very nice fish, this now, one. I did say we'd know it was the serious fish when it started pulling a bit of line back. Correct. I heard a little bit of uh, Finn's braid come off the old sustain there. Well, it's just a little. Uh, Ooh, a bit more too. A little bit of a zing, which now, we love. What was the plan of attack? I go over to get my chicken salad lunch. Well, I figured when you stop fishing, the others can uh, show you how it's done. So you go and enjoy your chicken and. Uh, Hopefully gonna, we can catch a bit of tea. I'm just going to see what's happening here now. To my cameraman Rick, I apologise. There's a fair old swell rolling in, even though there's not much wind. So it's a little bit topsy turvy, but it's all good. Let's see if David Campsell can actually stay on his feet and land this fish. What are your thoughts, mate? What do you think it could be? Well, everyone keeps telling me that when uh, when we're here and line comes off the rod, you're going you're gonna to get another guy. So that was the request for dinner. What have we it's got? Not looking the right colour. Oh, it's well, like a bit of a it looks like a snapper. Which? No, no. Oh, it's a nice little red too. A snapper of all things, mate. I got him for you. Fantastic, thanks, mate. It's a nice fish too. Beautiful. Okay. 
Now, what are you doing, David? We've got plenty of snapper yeah, in Port Phillip Bay. I know. Come all, you come all, all, way, all the way to South Australia and chomp, chomp. Uh, catch a beautiful, uh, beautiful snapper, but that is a magnificent fish, so I think uh, that'll be uh, very nice yeah, for me tonight. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. There's chicken salad happening on the table over there. In this hand, a snapper. Yeah. My producer is very, very happy because we're having yeah. fish and chips. This is incredible. We've literally had a school of tuna come to the side of the boat. Have a look at this. There is tuna everywhere, bluefin, just swimming around. So we've thrown some scraps over the side and we have a whole school of tuna. This is what fishing is all about. This is unbelievable. Look at this school of tuna. Look at them busting the surface there. Come on, boys, come and grab my little offering. It's only very light line, very small hook. They must be able to see the hook. They're so clever, these fish. Come on. Yes, Dave. Yes. Go. Go on, Dave. Oh, yeah. Come on, baby. Come on. What do you think you got, David? Jeez, I hope I got a, a bluefin. I think you have, because I can see you. <laughs> him, and his, him and his 5,000 mates, this is phenomenal. How incredible is it that we've got bluefin tuna all around the boat? This is just amazing. Went, went, the, went the jig. Yep. It was on the, uh, we are trying to jig for, for uh, nannies anything, and nannies and stuff at the bottom. Here he is, he's coming up. Come on, baby. Oh, Stay what a there. beautiful fish, Stay too. Mate, right. he's eating the jig. <laughs> Uh, has this ever happened to you while you're having your lunch? No, it hasn't. No, <laughs> no. This is a piece of chicken between uh, between fish. Is not unusual, the usual occurrence. David, you bring yours around the back, and I'll try and help you get yours on board. This is what fishing's all about. Best time to catch a fish is within ten minutes of having seen a fish. Bring it around, Dave. Here we go. And just bring that lead up to me. He has swallowed that oh, jig. Nice fish. Okay, you got some power now. Fish fishing and bone tip is brought to you by boatsouth.com.au. Best mate land of tuna is with the net. Mr. Clayfield, <laughs> can you help please? Oh, we oh, need fantastic. a bigger net. Thank you, Mr. Clayfield. Look at that. That is a southern bluefin tuna that likes roast chook. And David Campsell, I believe your first tuna. It is my first bluefin tuna, so I am absolutely stoked. And just to watch them all swim up to the boat and then take this jig was just phenomenal. Have a look at that somewhere down there. Is a 160 gram butterfly jig. Nice fish, Dave. Now, I have a serious question. <laughs> yes. Did you actually bring an angle with you? I did. Good, because soon we're going to have some bluefin tuna, both on ice and cooling, for a bit of sashimi tonight. And what a way to do it, to literally have bluefin just going around the boat everywhere. The only thing stopping us from catching more was that the mutton birds wouldn't let the tuna get to the bait. I threw this over the back, it drifted down, banged the tuna on. If we can keep these fish around, I'm actually going to get the fly right out, because catching these fish on fly would be insane. Rick, if you could hurry up, I'll go rig my fly right up. I'll try my best. Just take your time, mate, there's no rush. <laughs> How big do these angles come? A couple yeah. hundred litres? I think we might oh, need it. Well, I think we could do too. We could use a big angle for sure. It's so, going pretty well. It is going pretty well, and I don't think it's any closer than last time I spoke to you. Oh, hurry up, I can see more tuna! <laughs> This reminds me of the good old days on the south coast of New South Wales when you go out and you cube for a couple of hours and then you get 40, 50 kilo yellowfin out the boat all day, just hand feeding them a cube and off you go. It's amazing and you just don't realise the ocean is full of this life unless you physically put a hook in it and take it out. And then have a look at it, you can choose to put it back, but tonight we're eating tuna. I think you're getting him, Rick, because he's coming up in the water. That pot. was amazing to be eating the chicken lunch and somebody say, is that tuna? And the first thing they basically feasted on was our pieces of chicken. Unreal, eh? No, eat my chicken bones. I know, I know. <laughs> oh, you threw my lunch over. I did. It's not all about you, Rick. <laughs> yeah, Paul, I can't believe that we've hooked tuna on basically what we'd use for whiting. You must have big whiting in South Australia. Well, we have. We don't want to brag, you know. <laughs> Look, times have changed, because years ago, that would not be a tuna outfit, but now you've got a 4,000 sustained, beautiful T-curve rod, and it's great on snapper, it's great on beautiful. tuna. As long as you've got time to spend catching them, Absolutely. you'll nail them all day long. And doesn't it feel nice that you're fighting the fish, not the rod and reel? Exactly. Like you've always said, Never go hard. Yep. Just take your time and have your drag set properly. And again, the fish will wear itself out. There's no need to panic. Now, Rick, I've got the fly rod set up. Yes. I desperately want to throw a fly at these fish. Any chance we might see this one day soon? We might. We just got some colour then, so yep. hopefully this fish isn't too far away. But again, I don't want to rush him. I'll just take it easy and hopefully 
We'll get a look at him very soon. And I'm just going to throw cubes over the back. It's really important to not forget about the fish that are there. Once we catch this one, we want to catch more. So I'm just going to throw some more cubes and try and hold these fish at the boat. All right, Colin. Trying to let him get his head down, mate. So he's yep. just taking line on the swell. Yep, yep, yep. Now, when you go down on the swell, I see nothing, nothing you can do there. It's a bit of a stalemate here. Yep. Rick versus the tuna. Who will win? We'll find out after this break. And this is why anglers around the world chase bluefin tuna, because they are tough. You know, once you actually hook that fish, it is a battle royale. He's been on this for 20 minutes now. This is a really nice fish. Okay, here's our fish. Well, it was, Rick. It was. Net, net me up, sir. Yes. Doing a great job. You're right, just, he's doing very well here because the line touches this marlin board, it's all over. And I've got to ask a serious question, Rick. Mm. How many days have you actually got off work? Six. You better ring the box because I think we're going to be here a little bit longer. That's it, that's it. Doing well. He's just under the back here. And you cannot lift him, can you, mate? No. No, every time. Don't let that line touch. Oh. Oh, Rick's nearly over the side. <laughs> Good work. Put something on the belt, that's why. Oh. Right, go around, go around. Oh, sorry. Sorry, go, let go, let go, let go, let go, let go. Oh, I think it's on the... Sh There's a tuna right on his tail. Yeah. Chasing him. There's four tuna chasing him. Take your time, okay, just slide his head over towards me. No, he's going down. They're not silly, these fish. You're doing a great job, yep. Rick. Look at these tuna here. As a fisherman, this, this is like, call. oh my goodness me, the best thing ever. Slide him in. Oh, no, 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 no. Slide him in. Oh, and oh, mate, that is a beautiful tuna. If I get to grab the handle of yep. this. I'll try and hold your fish, but they're so strong. And Rick, welcome to a whole new tunaverse. I'll pass it over in a second. We're gonna say, beautiful fish. Southern bluefin tuna, South Australia is famous for them. They're still at the back of the boat. We'll fix this guy up because he's dinner. Rick, I'm loving your work. Thank you very much, Paul, and thank you very much, Oilfish. I've got a school of Southern bluefin tuna at the back of the boat. Dave just caught one, Rick's caught one. I'm actually going to get the eight way down and see if I can get one on fly. I've never caught a tuna on fly. If I could pull it off, it would be amazing. And I've actually been practicing my fly fishing now. I'm not that good, but I've been catching some nice bones, I've been catching some nice trout. It's just a matter of getting the line out there, letting it sink down. That's all about the strip. And if I can strip this little fly, it's a little pink thing. If I can strip it hard and fast enough, hopefully the tuna just turn and eat it without thinking. It's an intermediate line, which means it neither floats nor sinks, it sort of suspends. I'm going to drift it down the burly trail, put the rod under my arm, strip as quick as I can. I'm just going to repeat this process until hopefully the tuna eats it, because it's been one of my dreams and I just hope I can share it with you. When you're fishing for pelagics with a fly rod, you can't just strip like you would a trout. You basically tuck the rod under your arm and you pull as hard and fast as you can. So that's now stretched right through the burly trail and it's like this. Oh. Okay, I'm struggling to get this tuna to hit my fly. I can't move it quick enough. So David is dropping down a small slug, an instinct metal, without hooks on it. He's trying to fire him up, get him to come up, have a hit, and then I'm going to pull my fly past him. This is like teamwork, David. Absolutely. Oh, oh yes! yes! Got it! Got it! Yes! Oh, magnificent. Got him! Magnificent Just watch work. The How good is that? That, that is gold. Persistence pays off. I changed flies. Look at that. That's called a knuckle buster. I went to a gold bomber fly I'd used for Barra and I put 30 pound fluorocarbon tippet on. Bit of instinct. I reckon that was my 400th cast. And that time he decided to eat it. And that is persistence. And you know what? I hope I get this tuner on an eight weight so I can show you just how cool it is. But one and a half hours. I didn't hook this fish by myself. David Campbell's been throwing little instinct slugs without hooks on them. Rick Symes been chucking poppers without hooks on them. Getting these fish fired up 
and this fish physically ate that fly. The boys are nodding their head. <laughs> this is absolute gold. I'm loving my work. At Christmas time, I went away with the family, spent some quality time with a couple of friends and their young girl as well. And of course, what I do, I go fishing. And a good friend of mine, you might remember Greg, I caught some beautiful big brown trout in New Zealand with him. He actually gave me this rod and reel to take over to the Cook Islands, where I caught some of the biggest bonefish you could ever hope to encounter in your life. Some of those fish are potential 10 to 12 pound. I called Greg and said, Greg, any chance I could keep that fly just for another couple of weeks? I've got this little fishing trip to South Australia. Being a good honest Kiwi, who I'd known for 48 hours, said no dramas, Paul. And this is the same rod and reel that the man from the long white cloud gave me. Should be fish on the flats for bones, maybe even trout in the lake. But today, in the Great Australian Bite, we're hooked up to Southern Bluefin Tuna. Yeah, really good, mate. I'm very fortunate. I've got a sage fly reel here. It's worth a few bucks, but it's got an incredible drag. The drag is rated 1 to 10, and at the moment, I'm locked off on 10. And I'm giving this tuna as much as I can. My backing is actually 30 pound braid, so I want to get as much on this reel as I could. And now it's just a tug of war. But what I do have in my favour is that the tuna is actually pulling this Rio fly line through the water. So if you imagine a fly line, it's like rubber, and it basically does the same job as a sinker. So he's got to drag that rubber through the water, actually makes him tired and works in my favour. The fly does not have a big hook, but I'm hoping it's lodged really well. I'm going to take my time. I've never caught a tuna on a fly. If you get a chance to see my book, it's been out for about 12 months now. It's called The Fisherman's Bucket List. This ain't on it, but I think now they've actually experienced the fun, it might be in volume two. Part 9, edition 7. Rick, you must you fish the Barra Nationals. Some days the Barra are there, one boat gets them because they try Correct. something different, don't they? Exactly, and you always just got to keep work. Doesn't matter what species of fish you're targeting, you just, like you've done in the last hour and a half, change it up, change it up, change it up until you've found what was going to work. That colour fly, Correct. the leader, and it worked. And some people say fly fishing just makes hard work out of normal fishing. Well, today it actually was a bonus because we couldn't get pillies past the mutton birds. Absolutely. The mutton birds weren't silly enough to eat the fly, so it actually became the best option. It did. So I'm just going to back that drag off to a nine now. The fish is getting close to the boat, and you can see he's doing big circles. Look at that rod tip. See that boom up and down. See that? That is the tuna just swimming around, 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 around. And I can actually see him down there. It means he's tired, but I cannot pull him against the current. We've got a big boat here. You can see the swells pushing through the waves. We've probably travelled two or three k since I hooked this fish. So we just take our time, slowly work the fish up, and you'll find when they do that circle, quite often as they get to the far end of the circle, they'll rise in the water column a bit like this guy is. See that? And I get one wind. And if I've just got to take an inch at a time, I'm happy to do that because I've got all day. Uh, so who wants the pressure of the net job? Rick or David? Who's going to draw the short straw? I think we hand it to David. He started the Southern Bluefin this morning, so I think he can finish it this afternoon. Sounds like a, sounds like a task. I'll give a crack. Look at this, David. There's the fish just there. Yeah, David, and no pressure. He's bringing his mates with him. Now, what we'll do, we will only take a net shot when he's pretty much gone and ready, because yep. they, tend to, they tend to sink their head when they come near the boat. So just take our time. But yeah. I have total faith in you, even though Rick doesn't, mate. <laughs> <laughs> this is not going to be easy, and I've only got 30 pound fluorocarbon. Uh, he's still a while off, I reckon, guys. I can't wind much further because I'm just going to be able to tip it. All we can do is try and use the swell. He's going to turn any minute and go back the other way, I reckon. And if you check out the anatomy of fish, look at all the fish that have a tail the shape of a tuna. Your mackerels, your marlin, they are speed demons. And this guy is no exception. OK, I've got, it. I've got the leader onto the rod just to get him a bit closer for you. I can't get any leverage, David. Now, no. if you have to, mate, jump in. I promise I'll come in after you, OK? No. <laughs> Gee, he wants to sit out of this. Do you realise this is called a marlin board, not a tuna board, dude? We'll get lucky. If we just keep waiting, he'll make a mistake. Like now, he might pop his head up. Whoa! Thanks for the shower. I'm not winning here, David. Yes, you are. Confidence. Here he comes. Good shot. Good shot. Got him! Well done, Dave. Good shot. David well Cancel, <laughs> this is your life. That is Southern Bluefin Tuna on fly. I'm tired. We're going to take a breath, clean the lens, and have a look at this incredible fish. Yeah, baby! Southern Bluefin Tuna on an eight-weight fly rod. That is what fishing is all about, to coin a phrase. If anyone ever says, do you want to go fishing in the Great Australian Bite with Dave Clayfield? My suggestion is, you better say, why not? Because this is rocking. Do you agree, boys? I do. Absolutely. Sensational. How good is this?